Next up, we have some serious conversations lined up about where to find your consumer. As the world went from spring to summer, the places our consumers are to be found have completely changed. Let's hear more about it from the veterans themselves. And I'd like to welcome Gulshan Verma, Head of Advertising at Hotstar. Puneet Singhvi, CEO, Digital and President for Corporate Strategy at Network 18. And quizzing them on these trends will be Neha Singh, Director Client Insights at Comscore. A very warm welcome to all of you. Hi. Hi, Shiny. Hi, everyone else. Hi. So over to you, Neha. Thank you so much, Shiny. Uh, good evening, everyone uh, who have joined us today. Uh, as citizens, we have had our own share of struggles through the COVID and the lockdown. But all of us have come out of it. We have found a silver lining and somehow we tied through it. Now, one of the biggest pillars that enabled us to do that was our access to online media. Uh, one of the recent reports or the, or the latest reports from Comscore says that the online time spent increased by 30% in the last three months. If you look at categories like news, entertainment, and social media, it increased by 40 to 45%. And online gaming was a whopping 129%. So what does it really mean for us as publishers, as industry, as consumers? Let's, let's get into the nuances of, of this trend and have a chat with Puneet and, and Gulshan. So my first question is going to be uh, to you, Puneet. Hi. Hi. Uh, Puneet, Network 18 is home to audiences that love news and entertainment. And they have you know, uh, shown this by, by flocking to, to Network 18, especially during this time. Now, now tell us, give us, give us some color and give us some nuances of, of what this you know, audience behavior uh, meant to you, this shift of you know, suddenly flocking to the site, suddenly consuming news and entertainment. What did it mean to you as, as a publisher, uh, what were the nuances you saw and how did you uh, understand those needs and cater to it? Yeah, so, so for, for one, uh, you know, uh, we saw a tremendous growth in traffic across our network, uh, you know, obviously driven by, uh, by the fact that we own some of the most trusted news brands. So that, that, that helped. Uh, you know, given the circumstances and the uh, environment that we are in, uh, two, three things are very, very relevant for audience who are coming onto the net uh, in absence of a limitation of other accessible information like the traditional format of print or radio or, uh, or, or all of those mediums has been authenticity, uh, quick updates, uh, localized information are in and around that area. The situation is so dynamic uh, that things are changing by the day, by the hour, and uh, you know, the numbers are going up. So someone who can put all of that one in, in, in context and give them a slightly more uh, nuanced presentation in form of data visual, visualization, getting experts to come and comment and write about it and talk about it. And, and, that, and that typically for publishers like us who has been able to do it very well, um, has worked well for our uh, for our audience, you know, and and obviously uh, the audience set that we have seen uh, there is the traditional audience set which comes uh, comes to our site. Uh, there is a completely new set of audience that we've been able we've been attracting on account of people more and more people wanting to get more updates on what's going on, how things are changing, one lockdown to other, how ground realities change what the government is talking about, what are the next steps and all of those things. So I think that's opened up a lot of uh, new audience, which typically in a, in, a, in a news audience space, you would expect a slightly older audience. That, you know, that boundary and that spectrum merged a little bit. And we're getting an audience across uh, all age group. And you know, all of this, this is contributing to you know, almost a 50% 50, 50 month on month uh, increase on uh, on our traffic and uh, and also the kind of engagement and the time they are spending. So I think that's that's becoming very very relevant, very very uh, valuable. Uh, so that's on the general news side. On the business news side, there's been another interesting uh, observation. So money control uh, has almost grown by almost hundred percent 
month on month in terms of its uh, its traffic and 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 that's that uh, as for us is uh, driven by two or three factors you know one is for some strange reason stock market uh, seems to be having its own tune that it's working on very vibrant uh, things going up so obviously there it's holding up a lot of interest uh, it typically tends to discount a lot of a uh, lot of things and take a slightly more uh, uh, optimistic view of things so that that helps on on the second side uh, you know with with the pressures with the with the fear that has been instilled on on, on account of people uh, facing pay cuts losing jobs economy in general not doing as well as uh, it was let's say about a year ago there is a propensity to try and save up or try and look for ways to get themselves a little bit more aware about the financial tools or financial possibilities and how how they can uh, focus on things like mutual fund um fixed deposits and 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 all of those things and and that typically is uh, what they flock to the experts for and money controls a great platform for that so i think that's that's been a, another interesting uh, nugget of traffic growth uh, that we've seen on our network great that's that's interesting to know that it's not just news and entertainment but money matters keeping people very engaged Oh yeah. Great. Um thank you for that. Um Gulshan I'll come to you now. Uh I think it has been an extremely interesting and busy time for Hotstar. So Hotstar uh leads the pack for Indian streaming scene. And um not only did you have to deal with the with the challenge of an increased entertainment content given the scenario um you also had you know IPL getting postponed and you had Disney Plus launch happening. So 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 tell us what it meant for your audiences how did they receive disney how did they react to you know ipl no longer being on um just just no longer being available yeah i think i would say a couple of things i mean the first thing is 10 weeks ago our plans for this period april and may were very different we'd already announced the launch of disney plus um but ipl was going to be you know the biggest kind of launch at the phase that we expected and then suddenly it didn't happen Mm. and that is uh, an impact both not on our, only on our consumer base but also our brand partners and advertisers who are working with us in this period of time and the change is always something interesting to look at i think a couple of big decisions we took i think yes people are at home and watching more video so we're obviously beneficial of that mm-hmm. um but we took a decision to go ahead with our launch on our uh, hotstar with our disney plus in fact when we were just chatting about it that um you know we actually changed our entire brand name during the lockdown So f- forget um anything else you know we went from being hot start to disney plus hot start mm-hmm. uh, during the lockdown period i think there's a couple of things we learned i think the first thing is the ability to work and the ability to produce great compelling content mm-hmm. obviously has an impact because you you can't do live sports events anymore sure. and that obviously makes a ton of sense because what matters most is that sports and that the audience is safe and until you mm-hmm. can hold those in that kind of safe environment it doesn't make sense to it. to to hold these kind of big events but at the same time there is a user base that is interested in watching you know great premium long form content mm-hmm. um everything from and i think we took a push to launch disney plus hotstar simply because we felt that in these times users wanted to watch you know family friendly entertainment they could sit at home together uh mm-hmm. we bought unique content like the mandalorian in the entire back catalog of disney films uh princess mm-hmm. and princesses pixar uh, star wars marvel movies and again not just in english but also in multiple languages that are make it more relevant for the uh, indian audience so i think those two or three things kind of was a was a fairly big step up for us um and then as we started evolving in terms of how we started to think about our our new content you know we had two problems i think firstly like most of our television partners here we our broadcast was shut down okay mm-hmm. so how do you create content around that and so we've launched for example our new home based shows like home dancer which mm-hmm. launched this week basis the idea of can we take the idea of like you know like ashish was saying what people are doing at home and can we make some content out of it sure. and i think those are the two or three things i would say i think the only other thing i'd probably add is we've seen a different change in the kind of content world we want you know we talked about the power of news and what people are trying to find out we're actually one of the largest news streaming platforms in india because we carry mm-hmm. multiple like channels Mm-hmm. and you know that has almost tripled in mm-hmm. terms of what people are coming to hot stuff for they were mm-hmm. they were always new, no we were always known for sports but we had a very strong 
premium entertainment, we had movies, we had obviously Disney content, and now you see our audience mixing kind of fairly interestingly where we have news, where we have sports, where we have family entertainment, where we have entertainment shows all, and movies as well, and across multiple languages. Great. So, so that's that's great to know. You know, I mean, I mean, that resonates with me because I have been searching for family-friendly, you know, content with with my kid no longer going to the daycare and all of us being at home. And uh, they don't know, have Zoom classes. Uh, you know, I'm just too young for that, actually. <laughs> You'd be surprised. My five-year-old has Zoom classes. One, but uh, she's too young for that. Yes, yeah, thankfully. Okay. Otherwise, I would have had to sit along with her. Yeah. So um, tell us, uh, uh, Gulshan, I'll, I'll kind of come back. Uh, I'm, uh, I want to extend my question to you. Um, you also have, you know, um, audiences which, are, which have subscribed to you, to the premium content, but there are also audiences on the, on the free uh, model. So did you see any particular, you know, changes uh, or any, anything different in, in how they consumed content or was it, you know, business as usual? Look, I think we're not that far away from television from that perspective, which is mm -hmm. that um, there is a model on television where 90% of channels are pay channels. Okay. okay. Um, and that seems to work. And what we've seen right now is that we have models where some users register. We have some models where some users pay and they get access to premium content. Uh, okay. For example, sports or for example, Disney content in various languages. And there's also a different version where people get to watch you know, on uh, English content, for example, shows that you can't see here, okay, sure. uh, on a model. I think all of those have various monetization models. I think some are subscription heavy, some are advertising heavy, and some are a combination of them both. Sure. Sports, for example, always tends to be a fairly mixture of both subscription and advertising, mm -hmm. just as it is on TV. And I think that's a habit that we're building. I think my sense right now is that Disney Plus Hot Stuff probably has reached about almost 50%. Mm -hmm. of the entire subscriber base in mm -hmm. India for an online. I think that's a habit that we are taking the lead on building. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's interesting to know. So um, I'll, I'll come back to you, uh, Puneet, again. Um, you, you have mentioned that, um, you know, the audiences have changed and they have kind of, you know, uh, flocked to the sites that, that give uh, instant news and uh, entertainment and, uh, suddenly the needs have changed. Now, tell us what does it mean for the, for the advertiser? And, and I, would, I would rather focus on how did you change your brand solutions to, to meet that change of the advertiser and you know, bring both the change needs of the consumer and the change needs of the advertiser together? So, so yeah, I mean, look, uh, this is a situation where practically everyone is impacted. No one's spared of the impact of what this has, what COVID has brought around, both in terms of the economy and in general the consumer, uh, you know, the consumer spending habits, confidence, and all of that. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the advertisers, uh, let's say for FMCG guys or for a lot of auto guys, the supply chain is broken. The distribution networks ha have been stalled because of the lockdown. Uh, logistics are uh, not not necessarily uh, the the uh, the best shape uh, to, to talk about. Uh, so what this has done is it, it's done two things. You know, one is it's interestingly it's opened up a lot of new advertiser sets for us. Mm -hmm. uh, people in ad tech, people in uh, uh, in education, people in uh, you know people across gaming and OTT. Um, they, you know, that's those are the traditional, what you would say, uh, aligned uh, with digital kind of advertisers who are still going out and spending. Mm -hmm. uh, then there are the other set of advertisers like the FMCG, which interestingly has been a revelation for us as a news network, which typically tends to not get a whole lot of uh, FMCG advertising. Is there? campaign-based or awareness-based initiatives. And, uh, you know, in, in one of the previous sessions, if Shita or someone talked about uh, purpose-led marketing, you know, it's, it's about, uh, you know, extending their brand to be uh, associated with caring about their consumers, uh, creating awareness. So FMCG brands like uh, Reckitt or Dabur and all of these guys, they've been working with us fairly uh, closely on uh, very integrated campaigns across mm -hmm. digital and, and and television, and and we are able to 
uh, you know, because we have a television network, we are also have, able to have them uh, help them with some sort of basic video productions and stuff like that, which, uh, which in these times is very, very important. So I think that's, that's the other set of advertisers which has opened up for us. And finally, then there is the there are the traditional BFSI uh, clients where the scale of reach that they are now getting mm -hmm. is significantly higher. It's only that the conversion is, uh, is the conversion percentage is lower because people are a lot more tentative, and that's where we are working together with them to drive ed uh, education awareness, uh, getting webinars and experts to come and talk about it. You know, some of uh, we we just had a webinar on on Sunday where we got in excess of 20, 29,000 concurrents uh, driven by Money Control Pro. Uh, so I think there is there is interest. There are uh, formats that are emerging where people are getting a little bit more interested about doing integrated stuff. There is the traditional advertising on display, programmatic, and all that, but that that volume is is obviously a lot lesser. The demand side is sort of picking up slowly, and we. We hope that uh, that sort of comes back up on the radar in the next couple of months. Got it. Got it. Thank you so much, Puneet. Um, Gulshan, tell us how has how has the brand solutions on Hotstar, you know, changed for you? And I'm sorry, we will be rushing a little bit. We have just got a, um, you know, warning. So, uh, but but I'm really interested in knowing, you know, how has Hotstar really pivoted what they offer to the to the advertisers? Uh, you're muted, Gulshan. I think our advertisers were asking us, I think, three questions, which was one in this time, should we advertise? Mm -hmm. In the second time, second question was, OK, what's our message? What's our, what's our creative message that we should say? And I think the third thing they were saying is, all right, fair enough. Um, help me produce the ad. I think Puneet was talking a bit about it before. What's the right message, et cetera? Um, I think, and again, as head of advertising, I, I'm kind of biased upon this one. So I would say yes. You know, you should advertise. I think we did our own research with our social uh, med media monitoring unit, and we found that you know, 70% of advertisers, our uh, users were actually appreciative of advertising. That was more normal. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of feedback came around the the piece around. There was definitely interest in I think more nostalgic advertising that kind of hark back to a better time, including things like obviously Armul and other pieces that kind of worked well. Mm -hmm. I think the second thing that was like, well, why should I advertise when it comes down to the business side of it? And at least my perspective is that um, in, a, in, a, in an area of supply chain kind of disruption, not everyone's going to be, have access to the fa fa favorite brand they know. So actually, we had a lot of, you know, I would say new brands or tier two brands or people who weren't leaders actually saying, you know, maybe this is the time for me to get our product, who can get the products out in front of somebody. And maybe they can get a user as well, whether it's, you know, my uh, noodles aren't available, but this other brand may be good enough. And, you know, okay. how do you reinforce that activity? I think the third one is, yes, we were able to help them obviously with product. And I think the bigger thing that we realized is what's the messaging, what's the script, what's it look like? And I think our statement was, is that I think eight out of the top 10 TV influencers are on Hotstar. So mm -hmm. actually we've been doing a, a pretty interesting kind of rule where we're basically helping uh, marry brands and the right influencers across each other. And we did this with Kellogg's and, um, you know, we produced a whole set of advertising around, again, in Hindi and Tamil, in different languages, where, you know, the message was relevant. It was much more credible because it came from somebody who users are used to seeing and talking to every single day. And I sure. think that's something that we, we see. So I think those three in the end were the, were the biggest part of it. And the question is, we've always done brand solutions, but how to do it at scale? And I think mm -hmm. those things are the ones that we were able to scale up. Great, great. Thank you so much. So, you know, we were able to, um, cover both the, the the consumer side and how you know the advertisers are being catered to, and and the three broad points that I can quickly you know uh, point out before we wrap up would be um, this is the time when new audiences have come uh, to the to the uh, to the online digital media, and hopefully that's going to be the new normal as some of them would stay with us. Uh, this is actually a very good time for advertisers because there could be hidden opportunities and there could be um, you know new brands opening up there could be challenger brands that can that can take advantage 
And, and finally, um, this is probably the time when we should really be looking at how to win trust both on the consumer and, and the advertiser side. So I did have questions, but I, I think we are short on time right now. So I'm going to give it back to Shiny if you have any questions from the audience in case we have to address them. There are questions from the audience and I would request both of you to look at the Q&A and maybe answer those questions. So that's how some of the other panelists have also taken up questions. So it'll be great because we have specific questions for you, Puneet, and for you, Gulshan. So do look at the Q&A panel there. Thank you so much. I think this was, again, a very, very interesting session. Uh, thank you for joining us today.